When it comes to launching rockets into outer space, there lies many hidden problems, particularly with launch sites. The launching of a rocket before it ever reaches outer space is a major problem. It concerns the environment, nearby wildlife, and overwhelmingly impacts the local communities in negative ways. Let's go deeper into the hidden problems with launch sites. Welcome to the Global Network. Please support us by clicking the like button and subscribing to our social media accounts to stay up to date with our content. If you want to go further, consider joining our organization by visiting our website, spaceforpeace.org. First, let's talk about the obvious problem, polluting the environment. How does the launching of rockets pollute the environment? Well, the fuel. Launching rockets requires lots and lots of fuel. Obviously, fuel is a toxic element to our natural world. Different rockets use different fuels, and some, like Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin projects, as well as NASA, claim to use more environmentally friendly fuel, but this is a lie. The fuel they use is not as toxic as other fuels in the end result. Yes, this is true. But when manufacturing these fuels, it requires an intense process and lots of energy. This process is not environmentally friendly. Considerable amounts of carbon dioxide are released just through the development and manufacturing of these fuels. But also creating the rockets requires an entirely different intense process. With all this said, Think about all the rocket launches which have failed, exploded, and crashed. All of these so-called controlled chemicals are rapidly released into the environment, going into the air, ground, and water sources. Without going into too much detail, it should be highlighted that rocket fuel has been found in mother's milk who live nearby launch sites. The particular chemical found in milk is called perchlorate and it's known to cause thyroid problems and is very dangerous to children. This chemical is also found in drinking water wherever rockets are launched. Another growing concern with the increase of rocket launches in the past decade alone is ozone depletion. I think Nina Beatty, an activist from California, explains the danger of ozone depletion caused by rocket launches very well. She states four issues. 1. Rockets' radical emissions cause immediate, almost total ozone destruction for hundreds of square miles in which last days. 2. Rockets' exhaust and pollutants introduced into the stratosphere persist there and react with and destroy ozone over the long term. 3. The sun creates the ozone layer by changing oxygen into ozone in the stratosphere. But rockets put pollutants such as exhaust, water vapor, black carbon, and fuel components such as alumina into the stratosphere, blocking the sun's rays. This reduces the sun's creation of ozone, reducing ozone layer repair and replenishment. The long-lived rocket byproducts persist in the stratosphere for three to five years and accumulate with every rocket launch decreasing ozone regeneration with each launch. And four, the shockwave of deorbiting debris, satellites, and rockets creates nitric oxide, which destroys ozone. The long-term effects of rockets polluting the ozone layer, particularly the stratosphere, essentially traps heat under a rapidly thickening blanket, preventing heat from venting into space. This contributes to increasing Earth's temperature. This heat further contributes to the release of methane stored in the permafrost and formerly ice-covered regions. And what are governments doing about this? Nina Beatty goes on to explain, quote, Prior to 2021, 2,000 satellites were in orbit around the Earth. Then in 2021, 2,800 satellites were launched, more than doubling the total in just one year. However, the FCC has approved 17,270 low Earth orbit satellites, 65,912 more low Earth orbit applications are pending. Governments and private companies plan an additional 30,947 plus 
Rwanda has applied to the ITU for a staggering 327,320 satellites. And these numbers don't even include systems fewer than five satellites, geostationary or medium Earth orbit satellites, or rockets into space. So the problem of destroying an already fragile ozone seems to only be accelerating, and government oversight and industry is in total support of this destruction. With everything stated above, all these problems contribute to disrupting the wildlife and the ecosystem on which they depend. Elon Musk and his SpaceX rocket company has a launch pad in Boca Chica, Texas. It's at the very bottom of Texas, near the Mexican border, and sits on the coast of the Gulf of Mexico. Every time a rocket launches, or even crashes, it heavily impacts the ecosystem and the wildlife surrounding it. Oh, by the way, this SpaceX launch site sits next door to a wildlife refuge. In 2018 at a press conference, Elon Musk described the launch site in Boca Chica. We've got a lot of land with nobody around it, so if it blows up, it's cool. Well, when a rocket from SpaceX crashed in Boca Chica in 2021, it littered the delicate ecosystem nearby, comprising of tidal flats, beaches, grassland, and coastal dunes, as well as a huge range of wildlife, and even endangered species such as the ocelots. Brian Bird of the nonprofit Defenders of Wildlife says, It's really been shocking to witness the way the federal government has allowed this to happen. Elon Musk is building a space complex in one of the most environmentally diverse and inappropriate places in the world. The last point to make about these launch sites and the rocket industry in general is the false promises and hopes that these space companies propose to local communities. They promise jobs, pledge contributions to the economy and education, promise to abide by environmental regulations, and many, many more lies. And this brings us back to the Boca Chica SpaceX launch site. It lies near an indigenous community, the Carrizo Comacrudo tribe. Rivers which are considered sacred to the Carrizo have been closed off to them. Restricting access to this public beach violates the Texas Constitution. In an article by Aman Azar, he says, Since construction began in late 2015, the SpaceX facility, nicknamed Starbase, has evolved into a sprawling industrial complex, with launch sites, storage tanks for rocket fuel, and assembly and testing facilities busy with hundreds of workers. Starbase is one of the two spaceports in the United States licensed exclusively for private use. The SpaceX launch site in Boca Chica is in the greater Brownsville area. Azar explains, One of the poorest cities in the United States, Brownsville is home to a large Hispanic population and challenged by high rates of unemployment and poverty. SpaceX rolled in with big plans and tall promises of jobs and investment, promising to turn the city into a launch site for commercial voyages to Mars and beyond. In a cultural rebranding propaganda campaign, the Elon Musk Foundation put up the money for murals to be painted by three artists, all of whom are not from the Brownsville area. Brownsville has had a history of outsiders attempting to rebrand the area. A local artist, Jose Ramirez explains how these examples show how visual art and creative productions are used to distort local history, culture, and people. He says, These murals painted by non-resident artists and financed by an outsider, Elon Musk, are doing the same thing to Brownsville, this time under the shiny banner of Starbase. These false promises made by SpaceX and Elon Musk are, in actuality, eroding Brownsville's cultural identity, endangering ecological resources and sacred sites, and deepening the socioeconomic disparities in the Hispanic majority city of 300,000. Another example of false promises is the spaceport built in Kodiak, Alaska, called the Pacific Space Force Complex. The global network had the chance to speak with a local resident of Kodiak who said, 
We were promised many jobs. We were told that local residents would be trained to assemble satellites and that there would be all sorts of other jobs. But there is less than 15 jobs out there now. But the Kodiak spaceport also highlights another problem with these launch sites and the rocket industry. The interconnections of the private industry and the military. Kodiak is used for both, as well as nearly all launch sites. These spaceports are presented as mainly used for private corporations, for business adventures and entrepreneurship, but the military always has a heavy influence and use of these launch sites. But throughout New Zealand, we have knowledge of everybody that we want an independent foreign policy. It's impossible to have an independent foreign policy if you work with the United States military. You cannot have a concern for indigenous people if you work with the US military. You could start a long way back, but if you just start with Nagasaki and Hiroshima, our international war crime, move through Korea, the millions dead in Indochina, in Africa, in South America, you find one common thread. That's the military power and the economic might of the United States of America. That was footage from a protest in Auckland, New Zealand, just outside the headquarters of Rocket Lab, a US-owned but New Zealand-based space company. These activists are highlighting the connection between the US military and civilian space exploration. Let's talk quickly about what Rocket Lab tells the public and what Rocket Lab actually does. On its website, part of its mission is, quote, the satellites we build and launch are enabling innovation and exploration. They're keeping countries connected and borders protected. They're monitoring weather and managing waste. They're providing insights on climate change and helping us manage resources for future generations. Innovation, monitoring weather, and managing waste? Sounds great, right? Well then, why is Rocket Lab testing and launching rockets and various other technologies for the U.S. military and the CIA? These space technologies are contributing to a larger infrastructure of the U.S. military targeting and weapons systems. Lockheed Martin, the world's largest weapons manufacturer, is heavily invested in Rocket Lab. So is the CIA's venture capital firm, InQtel. Rocket Lab also has ties to DARPA, the main research agency for the U.S. Armed Forces, as well as the Office of Naval Research. Now, knowing what we know about the intentions of the U.S. military and understanding the devastating impacts of the space and rocket industry, this all adds up to a disastrous recipe for our world. I'm pleased to report that one of the organizations I'm closely liaising with in the United States is called the Global Network Against Weapons and Nuclear Power in Space. So really, we are in liaison with the best American minds who want to stop warfare because it's a barbaric practice and in the 21st century, we should not be engaging in it and certainly not encouraging it and certainly not spending millions and billions of dollars on it.